Good morning. It's like 6 a.m. over here in Arizona. And this video is going to be about the reason why I believe we've been stuck around uh, two and a half million a month, plus or minus some, depending on the month, for the past, really like at this point, almost the past year. A couple things. For context, you know, I started this company in 2019 and pretty quickly I got up to about 100K a month pace. And then the first plateau was there as I started to figure out sort of what I was selling, why I was not, not necessarily why I was selling, but what I was selling and how I was selling it, who I was selling it to and really created what I call the optimal selling system, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And once I had figured that out and got a few key team members, we really exploded to about four to $600,000 a month really fast. And here's the thing, from, that, from even that explosion, we really never stopped. I mean, we probably went through almost like 15 months in a row where we just hit a record every single month. I mean, I don't know if it was exactly 15, but it was a long time where every single month we were hitting a record, hitting a record, hitting a record. And in the past nine, 10 months or so, you know, we've been at anywhere from 2.1, 2.2 million a month to 3 million a month. So I always, if you watch my videos, I've been saying two and a half million a month a lot because that's pretty much been the average for the past nine months. So I wanna go over why I feel like I've been stuck because this has been a recent breakthrough for me. And in order for me to do that, I have to explain to you the different stages of growth. So this will actually be really helpful for you no matter where you're at in your company. Essentially, the first stage is you need to make yourself rich, okay? So stage one is making yourself rich. We're gonna go through five stages. And making yourself rich is really figuring out your optimal selling system. The optimal selling system has two parts. But even before we get into the two parts, you have to have a validated offer. So you have to have something where you've sold it a couple dozen times, you know it works, you have a fulfillment related for it, the fulfillment's gonna be able to scale, et cetera, right? So you know you have product market fit. But then the next part is the optimal selling system, which has two parts. And I already mentioned that, right? The optimal selling system is one, a consistent, repeatable, scalable way to generate leads. And two, a consistent, repeatable, predictable, scalable way to convert those leads, which are sales calls, right? Convert those sales calls into um, clients, okay? So it has to have the lead generation and the conversion, both in it. What's really key here is that it has to be something which you can, if you've ever heard the saying, right? You can like pull the lever and get clients coming in at will, right? There was something, it has to be something to where more inputs will equal more outputs, so to speak. That is really, really key. More inputs has to equal more outputs. And so a lot of people have like, let's say you have like 20,000 followers on Instagram. That might be able to get you to $100,000 a month, but a lot of times that can't act as your optimal selling system. It's just not as scalable. It's not predictable enough. Now, if you're Graham Steven, you got 4 million subs, yeah, I mean, that's, that's gonna be your predictable selling system all the way. So a lot of times, you know, Alex Ramosi, I've heard him say before that there's six ways to generate leads. There's own media, earned media, affiliates, there's paid media, there's referrals, and then there's also cold outbound. I believe that was six. In my experience in this industry, which is the high ticket coaching, consulting, et cetera, industry, most people's optimal selling system ends up being paid media. I would say the runner up is cold outbound along with people who have really big earned media. So again, like, you know, if you have 100,000, 200,000 subscri subscribers on YouTube, or even more than that, same or, you know, on uh, other social channels, you could be crushing it and getting to eight figures just with that. But it obviously is pretty tough if you're going from a cold start. So anyways, that's stage one, called making yourself rich. You gotta figure out what you're selling, who you're selling it to, how you're selling it, and really get a predictable way. It's actually the hardest thing, because once you have that in place, then, you're really in a position to rocket ship, which brings you to stage two. Stage two is making your customers rich. So what I mean by that is usually when you have, you get in a point where you have the optimal selling system and stuff starts to take off, what happens is the product breaks. So if you remember, I told you I was at 100K a month for a while, and then we kind of dialed this in and like exploded the four to $600,000 a month. Well, everything broke when we did that. Literally everything broke. So I had to redo the entire product. The very, very key thing about this stage is that a lot of people procrastinate by trying to fix the product before they scale, when in reality, you have to scale to let the product break to give you the right inputs of knowing what to change about the product so you can actually fix it and then scale. So it's very a lot of people use it as a procrastination thing because they're, oh, I gotta fix the product, I gotta do this, I gotta do this so that they can scale, but you don't even know what the product needs until it breaks, right? And it becomes so clear when it breaks, it becomes so clear. So the reason this is called making your customers rich is because what's very, very important here is fixing the product and really getting a method that is going to be scalable, right? So getting a method 
that essentially you're gonna be able to put clients in and for the most part, it's going, not going to break for some time, at least until you triple your company again. So that would be the idea there. Cause obviously everything's gonna break at a certain point, you gotta patch it, but you at least wanna put yourself in place for a triple. So again, for me, what was funny is when I was in stage one, I was actually trying to think about stage two. I was like, how do I scale the product? How do I scale the product? How do I scale the product? And I was just mentally masturbating and just procrastinating over this whole entire thing. And what was funny is it took me so long to try to figure that out. But then once we actually just bit the bullet scaled and everything broke, it only took me seven days to figure out exactly the new fulfillment system that we would have to make. And really that fulfillment system is something that I pioneered that now we use with all of our clients and it's, it's really a popular model. So that's stage two. Stage three is making your team rich. So this is where you really have to pour in. And by the way, you know, typically stage one can be anywhere from like a zero to 200 grand a month. Stage two can be anywhere from 100 grand a month to 400 grand a month, I'd say. Stage three, I think, takes you all the way up to potentially a million a month, you know, maybe even a little bit more. And so stage three is making your team rich, okay? So the big thing here, when you get your optimal selling system dialed in and then you fix the product, Essentially what you go into as the entrepreneur is being a full-time manager and nobody likes to do that. This is one of the biggest hangups I see with all of our clients is they get to this point where, you know, they know how they're generating leads. They have a sales team, their sales team can close them. They have that predictability, they have the scale, but then instead of really not doing anything new and just doing more of the existing stuff, they try to like do a bunch of new stuff or launch a challenge or launch a new marketing campaign or launch a new webinar. And it just is not necessary. So what you, what you wanna do is in stage three, you're a one trick pony with your marketing. You have one system that works, right? You're a one trick pony. You need to ride that one trick pony. Is, is You need to max that puppy out. I mean, you need to ride it as hard and as far as you can because what you're gonna focus on in the meantime is really being the full-time sales manager of your business, the full-time client success director of your business, the CEO of your business, right? You're gonna be in this phase where you're really pouring and developing into your team and you're just leading your team. You're moving, if you read organizational physics, you're moving from what's called a innovative energy to a producing energy. And it's very, very different. And so in stage three, you're just pouring into your team. And really what you wanna identify in stage three is who are these people you're internally grooming to be your next sales manager, to be your client success director, to be your, et cetera. Of course, you could get that somebody from the outside. That was always a possibility. Ideally, I mean, you can try to do both, right? You'd be interviewing from the outside and then you can also be trying to internally groom. So that's stage three. Yo guys, hope you're joining the video. If you wanna learn more about how you can use the skills that I'm talking about in this video, so the skills of persuasion, the skills of sales, to get a remote career to where you could make 10, 20, $30,000 a month, if not more, working from anywhere in the world, simply just with your laptop and an iPhone, there is a book a call link below. It should say book with the Remote Closing Academy. Book a call link below. You can go ahead and check that out. Speak with somebody on my team and see if we can help you. Now back to the video. Stage four is teaching your team to do the same thing that you just did. So what happens at stage four, and this is where I would say you go, you, you're gonna go from a million a month to probably multiple millions a month, potentially maybe at the low end, 700 grand a month to like a million five, two million a month, is you have to teach your team how to pour into their team and how to start to let, develop levers or leaders in their team so that those leaders can buy back their time. Because what happens eventually is the biggest bottleneck in your business, and this is at scale, right, is that your leaders start to bottleneck, right? And then they become the bottlenecks of the business. It's not you anymore, but it's them, right? So you have to teach them to do what they just did. And a lot of times that means really, you know, incentivizing people, giving big comp structures to other leaders on the team, grooming new leaders up. So there's two levels of leadership. It's not just you, it's not just them, but there's a third level that's below you if you're the sole CEO. And so stage four is really repeating that process. And, you know, I've been in stage four for a long time and I've really thought that, man, the reason we can't scale is because we don't have enough leaders. You know, my, my, my leaders are bottlenecked. And I do think that is true to an extent, but you know what I've actually figured out is that I have yet to embark into stage five. And stage five, and at least our business model, my business model, is essentially where you reinvent yourself. So I call stage five re-innovation. And this is why I, I did not, I was too stubborn to realize that I needed to go into. And um, this is essentially just where you know, we've been bottlenecked because we've been unwilling to step into this phase. 
and do the things required to scale through this phase. And I think reinnovation can take you from 10 or 20 million to 50 to 100 million. And a lot of times this obviously kind of restarts the cycle as you'll see. So what happens is, you know, remember when I said you develop your optimal selling system and you kind of have this initial innovation period, then you gotta be a one trick pony and ride and max that sucker out. Well, what happens is eventually you do max that sucker out and your one trick to get clients is pretty much fatigue. Whether you're hitting your TAM, whether you're hitting, you know, it could be a, it could be a bunch of different things. You could be hitting the TAM, the promotion could phase out, you know, you could have competitors come in, could be, could be anything. So what happens in reinnovation is you have to find not necessarily new things to sell. It's not like you're launching new offers and companies, but what you wanna do is find new ways to sell the same thing. Let's say you're running a VSL call funnel for one of your offers, and that VSL call funnel hits on pain point X, Y, Z. Well, you could duplicate and launch another VSL call funnel that hits on pain point ABC, right? So it hits on a different pain point. Or you could launch uh, a group funnel if you have a VSL funnel. You could launch a low ticket product if you have a VSL funnel, right? So you have to become more prolific in your marketing and find new ways to sell the same thing in different ways. That is very, very key. Because what most people do is they're like, oh, this is, this is pretty much it for this company. I've scaled it, I'm at the TAM. And essentially what they do is they start a new company and then you split your focus up becomes really, really tough. And you don't wanna do that. You just wanna find a, a new and different way to sell the same thing. And so that could even be just, oh, okay, we're gonna use YouTube ads now instead of Facebook. We're gonna use TikTok and YouTube. You're gonna to go multi-channel. We're going to go after a, a different sub demographic. We're gonna go after a different pain point psychographic. We're gonna use a different conversion mechanism, AKA a funnel. And so in this phase, stage five, what I've been putting off that I've needed to do for a long time is become more inventive and prolific with our marketing. Now here's the key of stage four to stage five is because as the founder, and you know, I'm, I'm speaking from my experience here, right? Like this is just what I've gone through. Obviously a lot of this can hold true across anything, but you know, depending on your company and what you're doing, you know, this is not necessarily gonna apply word for word, stage for stage, but you can kind of get a lot of nuggets out of this. For me, you know, what's interesting in stage four is like, that's the time that you finally get back your time. Because prior to that, you were the one managing and running the entire company. You're the full-time manager for your company, right? Well, what happens is when you teach your leaders how to take that over for you and develop their own leaders, then they can start to run the company. You start to buy back your time. You have more time to start that innovation again, right? And that it's really the first time you're re-innovating in your business from stage one and stage two when you're working on the marketing and the product. So that is the key. And you know, it's funny, I've just been so stubborn and I've been like, man, we're just gonna do one thing and just max this one funnel out as hard as we freaking can. And this one positioning out as hard as we can. And you know, that, that served us obviously, that was really, really good. But now it's time for us to be more prolific with our marketing and find new and different ways to sell the same thing. So hopefully that helps. And what's funny is once you get to stage five, it kind of, re, you know, it cycles, right? Because you might hit another really big breakthrough campaign. That's going to take you to the next level. And then, uh, then you got to obviously build more leaders. You got to pour into the team. You got to kind of manage the chaos that campaign's going to create. So hopefully that helps. I do believe this is applies to almost every high ticket business, agency, coaches, consultants, course creators, stuff like that. You know, if you're a different type of business model, you're raising funding, you're doing different, I mean, this might not. You know, some of it might, you might get nuggets from, but it's not necessarily going to be like the, uh, the Bible for you. But I can tell you from my experience and in this industry, at least this really applied to me. And I wish I would have known this before. So hope that helps guys and, uh, have a great day and I'm going to wrap up my morning walk here. See ya.